Now we may be pretty biased. After all, we are called Salesforce Bet. But even after all these years, Salesforce is still a pioneering tool in the CRM space. With a range of power features and products that can help you get one step closer to your all important business goals, it's a shining jewel in the market's crown for a reason. If you're still making the decision on whether to dive in head first or you just want some more information on how to get started, this video is for you. We'll run through everything you need to know about implementing Salesforce, including the things your stakeholders will be thinking about. And a massive thank you to this video sponsor, Mowgli. Let's get into it. So you're thinking about implementing Salesforce. Welcome to the dark side. We're kidding, it's great to have you here. In a super TLDR way, Salesforce is the world's leading CRM platform with a whole host of CRM tools that help you manage your customer data with a unique 360 degree view. However, it's also more than that. It helps you automate workflows, streamline sales processes, and integrate disparate systems for a seamless customer experience. It's also super customizable, making it suitable for a wide range of businesses. If you're curious to find out more about all the products in Salesforce's impressive suite, then check out this video here, where we go over every single product that Salesforce has. It's a must watch, especially if you're new to the ecosystem. So why does a good implementation strategy matter? Well, Salesforce is a powerful tool, but its true potential is unlocked only when it's implemented correctly. A well-executed implementation can transform your business operations from improving sales processes to delivering personalized customer experiences. On the other hand, a poorly planned rollout can lead to wasted resources, low user adoption, and unmet business goals. And nobody wants that, especially after promising stakeholders results and forking out money for the tool. Speaking of stakeholders, throughout this process in particular, you'll want to keep them in the know so you don't end up running into issues like misalignment when you're nearing completion, because that sucks. You know what also sucks? Trying to reach your customers, especially through email. It can oftentimes feel impossible, but don't worry, our video sponsor Mowgli can help. Struggling to get follow-up actions like confirming appointments or recovering abandoned carts? Try texting with an average 90% open rate, SMS outperforms email. Using Mowgli, a powerful SMS tool, you can send and receive SMS and WhatsApp messages directly from Salesforce. You'll be well supported too. Their support and implementation teams are 100% US based and all well versed in Salesforce. Find out why organizations that use Salesforce trust Mowgli with all their SMS and WhatsApp needs today at www.salesforceben.com forward slash SMS, which will be linked at the top of the description. Back to the video. To fully implement Salesforce, you'll need a project manager, a Salesforce consultant, and potentially Salesforce developers. However, not all companies have these internal resources, particularly when they're just starting out. Many implementations also require experts to guide your business through the process and help you explore the different options for Salesforce implementation. If you're ready with the right team, here's how to get started. Step one, define business requirements. The first step in any Salesforce implementation is clearly defining your business goals. What do you want to achieve with Salesforce? What goals or targets do you have in mind? How will Salesforce align with your long-term strategies? Clearly defining your objectives will serve as the foundation for your implementation strategy. For example, if your goal is to improve sales efficiency, you'll want to focus on features like lead management, pipeline tracking, and sales forecasting. Step two, choose the right Salesforce edition and products. Once you've decided what you want to get out of Salesforce, you'll need to consider which edition and which Salesforce products will be right for you. Salesforce offers a range of editions from the lightweight essentials to the full unlimited edition. Each tier comes with different features and pricing, so it's crucial to choose the one that best fits your business needs and budget. Essentials, ideal for small businesses with basic CRM needs. Professional, suitable for growing businesses that need more advanced features. Enterprise, designed for larger organizations with complex processes. And Unlimited, offers the full suite of Salesforce capabilities for enterprises. As well as the core platform, Salesforce also has a range of clouds dedicated to specific business needs and tools you can add on. You have many options from Sales Cloud to Service Cloud, Marketing Cloud, Salesforce Maps, and Salesforce Revenue Cloud. Choose the right mix of products that align with your goals to maximize your Salesforce ROI. Take the time to assess your needs thoroughly. 
and if needed, seek guidance from a Salesforce expert to help you make an informed decision. Step three, plan your data migration strategy. By now, you've probably made your decision around which edition and products you would like to use. You can work with an account executive to get you all set up and up to speed with how your solution works. Now is also the time to think about your data migration strategy. Data is essential to any CRM system and migrating it to Salesforce is a crucial step in the implementation process. Here's how to ensure it's done correctly. One, assess your data. Clean up your data and make sure you deal with your existing technical debt. This includes things like duplicated and outdated records as well as unnecessary information. Two, map your data. Define how data from your legacy systems will map to Salesforce fields. Three, utilize a migration tool. Salesforce has native tools that can help you migrate data over, but similarly to the previous step, there are also third-party solutions that you can use too. Four, ensure data security. When dealing with, well, all your data, you'll want to keep it secure. Data security must be a priority before, during, and after your migration. Plan how you'll configure Salesforce to support this. Step four, customize and integrate. So you're all set up with the products and tools you need in Salesforce. Time to customize and integrate. One of Salesforce's greatest strengths is its flexibility, and you can customize the platform to match your unique business processes and workflows. Consider creating custom objects and fields, automating processes with tools like Flow, and designing reports and dashboards that display the data that is most important to your business. This is also a good time to consider working out internal security, like permissions, and ensuring only the right people and teams have access to only the data they need to see. Salesforce also doesn't function alone, so it's important to integrate it with your current systems, whether this be something like ERP or marketing automation tools. Want to guess where you can find some handy pre-built integration tools? That's right, the App Exchange. Step five, test, test, and test again. You've got everything in place now, including your data, tools, and integrations. Amazing. Now comes the fun, not so fun part, depending on who you ask. Before going live, perform thorough testing to ensure all customizations and integrations function properly. Salesforce has clones of your environment called sandboxes. This will help you spot potential issues before they affect daily operations. Do not, no matter what you do, skip this step. Step six, tackle user training and adoption. Okay, now the site is live and you're raring to go. Time to deliver all this cool functionality to your users. Your users will be at different stages of Salesforce understanding, so it's important to provide training and resources that are tailored to these different users. After all, even the most well-executed Salesforce implementation can only succeed with proper user training. Sandboxes are also great for user training. This is also a good time to monitor how your users get on with the platform and make sure to continuously update training and offer opportunities for your users and stakeholders to provide feedback. Congrats, you made it through all the steps to secure a strong Salesforce implementation. Before we leave you to get the ball rolling, here are some top tips to keep in mind to ensure you succeed. Stay on top of data quality. Clean, organized data is key to getting the most out of Salesforce and ensuring your users don't run into issues down the line. Two, keep your stakeholders informed throughout the process. The best expert advice I've heard is that everybody involved in the implementation process should be informed from day one and kept informed to avoid misalignment or misunderstandings. Remember, Mowgli can help. Three, listen to your users. If you're sensing resistance or low adoption, communicate with your users. Find out what's wrong and how you can help. It might just save your implementation efforts. Thanks for watching. Now go and try out Salesforce.